Hi folks, this is going to be a video on the disassembly of the late war style of Walther K43. Uh, this particular rifle is a D-block AC45 code. It's a little tough to tell because the serial numbers are not perfectly consecutive at the end of the war, but this is probably about 2500 from the very end of production, so extremely late production rifle. As such, this is of the later style that does not have the disassembly latch on the carrier. So instead of compressing all this and then pulling it out as one piece with it latched together, we're actually going to be just removing everything from the back side. It's a design improvement and simplification that was implemented uh, during production. Uh, so it didn't start out that way and then by the end of the war, this is how they were being made for the most part. Normally to start out with on this, you'd be removing the magazine, which is just pushing forward on this little latch, and it comes out. In this case, I'm going to be resting the rifle on this empty magazine shell. So I've removed the follower, spring, and floor plate, and that's just for, for the camera work. Uh, normally this would be taken out and left out. I'm going to put the empty shell back in. Coming up from the top here, I'm going to extract, check the chamber, we're clear. To start with on this, you'll be putting the safety on. The safety must be on for disassembly. To do that, we take this lever and we flip it from the left side over to the right side, just like that. Very similar to like K98, Gewehr 98, very Mauser style. We're going to push forward on the disassembly latch and lift up. It helps if the dust cover is rearward for this. It's not totally necessary, but it sometimes gives you a little bit extra clearance. As you saw, I was able to do it without the cover being back, but it, it can help. Action cover comes off. The dust cover does not come off of the action cover. Recoil spring is in two pieces. To take this apart, pay attention to the orientation. There's a notch in the bottom of the guide here, the guide rod, and it goes towards these two lugs. Pull back on the spring, just with finger pressure. This little end plate comes off. Spring comes off. You don't want to disassemble this telescoping guide rod it should be left as it is here. For reassembly, place a spring back on and just compress it with your fingers. Put the little end plate back on. This plate is actually cut in on one side, so you're not actually able to put it uh, on the wrong way. But just to make your life easier, it's easier if it's lined up the right way to start with, so you're not trying to do it wrong. To remove the bolt, we'll grab the carrier, pull to the rear, the carrier simply lifts up in the back and comes off. It has this little foot on it that goes through the bolt down into the locking wedge. Bolt lifts out. To disassemble the bolt, we're going to want the locking wedge all the way to the rear. We'll apply very mild tension with our fingertips to the firing pin extension. 
and we'll just push in with something non-marring gently on this little pin head here. The locking wedge comes out. The locking flaps at this point now can basically just fall out. That's all there is to that. They're not interchangeable. One of them you'll see has a cutout in it that corresponds to this little divot indentation on the bolt. So it only fits in like it should. Because if you try to put the other one in on this side, it will not fit. The locking wedge, you see here, this is where the recoil spring rides on it to push it forward. This little pin comes out part way. It shouldn't be removed fully because the end is actually flared slightly. Pull the firing pin extension out. Firing pin just falls out the back. That's all there is to that. Place the firing pin back in. Place the firing pin extension in with this little cutout in it facing upward so that it lines up with its retaining pin. And the retaining pin should easily press back in when it's lined up correctly. On the bolt, we'll take the locking flaps, paying attention to get the right one on the right side. This is a little bit finicky. You just kind of have to hold things carefully and try not to wiggle it around too much as you're placing them in here because they have a tendency to, to fall over, fall out, fall through. Basically any way they can fall other than the way you want them to be is how they like to do it. When you have them set in there, Grab your locking wedge, making sure it's orientated correctly. This hole in the top is going to line up with this slot in the top of the bolt. If I can get that back in there right. Insert it from the rear. And you just have to make sure that it goes between those two flaps. And so you might have to play around with it a little bit to get everything lined up just right trying to do this in camera profile is a little tricky. Let's see if I can get it done. And they're going in. Push on the pin a little bit just to help it get in there. There it is. Extractors right here. We're not going to be removing that. The way this works is as the carrier comes forward, this wedge forces the locking flaps out into their abutments in the receiver. When the carrier is pushed rearward by the gas piston extension, which we'll get to in the subsequent video, the wedge comes back and the flaps are pulled back in as it moves rearward. Just like that. These cutouts are clearance cuts so that when everything is going back together, the action cover is able to angle down enough to lock in the back. For reassembly, Put the carrier back in, make sure it's down in there all the way. We put it into the rear unlocked position. Place the bolt and carrier back into the receiver. 
we're going to have to apply slight downward pressure as we're going forward to overcome the spring-loaded ejector here. Push forward. When we get about here, we can just... Why not wind up right? It's kind of hard to tell sometimes. There it is. good and this magazine causes a little bit of drag so that's what you're seeing there it's not perfect but that is lined up correctly that's how it goes just takes a little bit of pushing to get it in the spring goes into the rear of the bolt like so to where it's going to be sitting on the very top that locking wedge, the action cover comes on. And what you're wanting to do is, actually, let me do this differently so you can show you. You need these two studs on that end plate to protrude out the back of the action cover. Your disassembly button is protruding out the back past the serrated area. Put the spring back in. Coming in, you need to just line it up like so. Come down, and you'll need to push in on the disassembly button, and it'll pop back down. Make sure that the button pops back out after you've snapped it down so that your action cover is secured. The dust cover here does not disassemble. It's pressed on to the to the action cover. That's all there is to it. Check back to the next video for disassembly of the gas system. Thanks for watching. Uh, put any questions in the comments or just comments in the comments. Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate you. Thank you.